Thorsten is doing a very good job. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he must have a big no emptiness. Comment. Yeah, no emptiness. <laughs> Here we go. The okay. game starts, and it's a Karen in blue against a Castores in white. Oh no, this is wrong. We are, I, I just jumped into the game. It's a Karen in blue versus uh, the Turks disc in white. Ah, uh, in okay. Disc in blue and a uh, at least in white. a Karen was right. Yeah, a Karen was correct. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. And Akron here in, in possession of the ball. Oh, and Turkey is snatched away, going for a quick counter attack here. But have we have we have um, we have Turkey against uh, Malmö. Okay. Okay. Let's reset. Okay, reset. Emptiness. Uh, Turkey. Can we please have the correct uh, teams <laughs> in the bottom? We are getting confused here in the <laughs> yeah. commentary. Group. It's too late for us. It's Turkey against Malmö. Yes. Yeah, Turkey too long in blue there. against uh, Malmö in uh, white. Huh, this is a uh, interesting game. I I'd say uh, no, I can't say. I'm not say who who will be uh, uh, the team with a better advantage. Uh, in my point of view, we see uh, Malmut Riton going into attack on the Turkish oh. basket. Oh. Very Open nice, basket and, and the basket already stolen. I'm not going to I'm not going to be sure if it's. Uh, you could have caught that if you're. Yeah, pushing a little pushing. bit, but yeah. maybe he, he is the uh, advantage. Yeah. Well done here by Ticket Clear uh, with the the basket. Turkey now on defense. Turkey um, with quite a strong um, um, offense here. They are really positioned when it comes to scoring. They're putting applying a lot of pressure to the basket. They they are pretty universal. I think they can swim fast. They can defend. They can attack. So it's a really compact, universal team here. Yeah. I think though their the biggest uh, weakness is going to be their defense. From playing against them personally, okay, yes. I think their their biggest uh, weakness is their defense because uh, at least playing against us, um, it was not as strong as their offense. But they are doing a very very good job of uh, trying to keep the ball in their in their own ranks uh, in the opponent's half, um, trying to uh, apply pressure as much as possible. Pretty much like a current female team did uh, okay, the yes. last game here. Yes. Um, uh, just brute forcing their way, the way into the opponent's half um, also stealing the basket away if you don't uh, cover it up okay. properly so yeah we'll see um, if they can manage it against uh, the Swedes here or if Malmö is going to be an advantage they haven't uh, yet uh, made it to the basket from uh, Malmö Triton yeah. they're uh, in a quite a distance and here they come uh, three players coming well, in really nice Both pass sides there above yeah. the defender but, but he couldn't execute going into the goalkeeper on this side and he couldn't get rid of the ball uh, either because he was attacked by a Malmö Triton player yeah nice job there by the forward or the defender to immediately oh, that was Oh, Whoa. there was an empty basket and throw. Yeah, empty. inside. Whoa. Wow. Surprising. A little bit surprising. Yeah. There was absolutely no defense. All defense was delayed on the Mount Triton basket. And I think they will be angry themselves about it yeah. because we are in the first some minutes Usually of the game. The players shouldn't be out of, out of breath that much yeah. that they yeah. can't defend. Yeah. But in a probably like they, that. Were, they were orienting in going forward and yeah. attacking and putting a lot of push into the forward. Yeah. And I didn't think they would stop and the ball would go backwards. And there's already one Mamba player in ah, the, the middle position, but. He uh, didn't get the ball, he didn't see it, it was Haka right there, behind Haka him. Read the situation and snatched the ball away. Uh, also, he didn't, the Mamba Triton player didn't see the ball uh, being passed down t towards him. It's amazing how Hakan, he's, he's a really massive guy, so he, he can really drill himself in through through the defense. And uh, I wonder why they don't... Oh, oh again, I'm almost basket again an empty basket. Empty. What is Mama Triton doing here? This is really surprising for yeah. the beginning of a game. And it's an experienced team, and they are not under this much pressure here. Yeah. But now again, now here's the fast break from Mama Triton. They're trying to close immediately to uh, the Turkish basket. But Tuki with the defender in place, and now the attempt to pass the ball to the other side, but being stopped here by the forward. Ooh, very nice pass, but the around the basket. But there was no player in place to actually grab the ball. He was just leaving the position a couple of seconds earlier. 
So, where, Thomas, where do you see well, well, your experience playing against them? Where's the weakness? Because I see them uh, very agile in their defense. Because they are not there, or they, mm. they leave to to hold to big gaps. Um, I think that uh, they are uh, open to counter attacks. Actually, they okay. uh, will play a very um, heavily physical game uh, in the midst of the pool. They will try to apply pressure with three to four people uh, to regain possession of the ball because they want to play in on your half. They don't want to be on defense. Uh, I mean, no, no, one, no team wants to play in defense, but they really want to okay. stay in their points half. Okay. And so they're applying pressure with three to four players uh, against Malmö Triton. And then you're opening the counter attacks. And you usually only have one defender and one uh, back in place. Okay, and if I you see. can execute a counter yeah. attack with three players, two, three players, there's a good chance you actually will uh, overpower the defense before the forwards can reach them. And you have quite an excellent scoring opportunity. So their system is uh, offense oriented uh, yes. forward. Okay. But then again, Malmö Triton tried to tried to do the same, um, leaving the goalkeeper leaving the basket, helping mm. the forwards. Absolutely. But they, they paid the price for it, and um, they actually gave uh, Turkey a very very easy scoring opportunity. Invitation. Yeah. And has more or less a scoring invitation there. Yes. Yes. But now Malmö. Well. Re regaining the focus, yeah, Turkish players uh, trying to grab here the basket a little They're bit. They're really holding on to the basket like mm -hmm. there. It was not in the interest situation, but nevertheless. So we're in the middle of the pool. It uh, looks like we have a cluster here. One Turkish player comes out of it, going to the surface. Mm -hmm. Blind pass behind the back uh, in the arms of uh, number 24, it was, I think, 12 it was. And here's another Turkish player going in. And they come into the defense with a lot of force. But another blind pass, very nicely made uh, to the open side. Ball is free, recovered by... Uh, Turkish player and now they go in with another wave but there is almost always a single player going in with a lot of force trying to drill a hole in the defense of Malmö Triton but uh, until now they haven't succeeded in really challenging uh, the goalkeeper um, the two goals um, the one goal they made was an, an empty basket we don't have a, a number list from uh, uh, the Turkish team okay so was <laughs> yeah we have the names but we don't have the numbers ah okay so I was trying to find it. Oh, you cannot. You, it's almost <laughs> impossible for you to. You can. You can improvise. <laughs> I can read. Uh, we can read on the shirts, though. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we can uh, write the names in. Okay. Now three four for Turkey, as far as I've seen. Yeah. Here we go. I think uh, Malmö Triton will be angry by the first uh, yeah, goal they, they they're caught. They're trying to create scoring opportunities now. Again, a player being in the mellow position but giving it up. And Turkey trying to scrum the ball away here. Uh, not giving Malmö Triton any chance to pass it underneath the ball to give Malmö no chance. Well that's again what, what you said, there is only the goalie, they, they yeah. don't have a defender, or uh, it's yeah. offensive for checking, yeah. but the movement is forward and not uh, to shut down their own basket. Yes. Oh, a uh, call from the referee. Uh, I think it's holding the equipment or holding the, the cap. Free throw, throw against Turkey. Well, it's late in the day, and uh, I don't remember how many uh, games uh, Manu Triton did have today. One, two? I'm not, not so sure. At least one. At least I, one yes. I remember. I haven't commented all of them, but uh, even if I do comment all of them, uh, they blur in my mind, so <laughs> I'm not so sure to remember it. We have a cluster on the surface in the middle of the pool, and uh, I see two Turkish player trying to get the ball away from a Malmö Triton player, but the Malmö Triton player just pushes the ball out of this uh, cluster uh, into the hand of again. a Malmö Triton player. Again. Player snatched it away um, right uh, at the wall. And Turkey know that they are physically a quite strong team. Yep, so they, they, they will uh, seize or try to seize um, this to their advantage. And even though Malmö Triton is not a weak game, uh, but they us usually more focused on, on speed. Yeah, and, and game ball play. Creating, yeah. creating opportunities by uh, quick ball handling and quick passing. Whilst uh, Turkey, with a quite young team actually, yeah. usually uh, rely more on the physical conditioning and the strength of, of some of the players. And a lot of the um, attacks on the on the Malmö Triton basket will actually go uh, via one or two very heavy players. Yeah, like Hakan. Like Hakan, who is 
going in and trying to um, punch a hole into the defense, into the defense <laughs> basically, yes. trying to brute force him yeah, onto yeah, the goalkeeper yeah. and, and pulling them away. Yeah. It's not elegant, but it's effective. Yes, uh, and if you if you read the tactic and if you can play against it, and um, you know they're doing like that, you can actually focus um, those players out with um, your uh, forwards and really intensely disrupt, disrupt their, their yep. forward play. Yeah, yeah, that would be my uh, choice too, in this case. Okay, Malmetriton uh, trying to. Okay, the first uh, end of the first half already. Wow, time goes by when uh, I'm commenting with you. <laughs> yeah, very fast pa fast paced game there. Um, Turkey here on the advantage, I'd say. They usually have the better. Uh, they had clearly the, the first goal was a really, well, it was a, a scoring opportunity created by Mamma yeah. to, to say the least. W without that chance, uh, there was there's given to Turkey yeah. from Mamma probably we would have a 0 0 here. Yes. So there was no um, self-enforced uh, scoring opportunity here by, by yep. the Turkish team. Um, Malmö Triton now trying to play more of a possession game here and um, and um, trying to keep the ball in their own ranks, create melee position games like they, they're used to. It's uh, their standard game plan. That players like Andreas Bergenholz and just block the entire um, back side of, of the uh, yep. front side of the basket and just get the ball um, and, and score from the melee positioning. But Turkey doing a really good job of just strumming the ball away. They, yep. they know they have the one zero advantage. They know they have the brute strength to do so. Um, Malmo here wants to have the ball, keep the ball running, keep the ball uh, on, on the rush with fast passes. And um, Turkey clearly knows what they got to do to yeah, prevent yeah. the ball from reaching their own goal. Exactly. They interfere in the play. Um, I'm sure that like a lot, of all of the teams, they studied the gameplay of the other teams and they know what to do to interfere with the gameplay. And right now they are forcing. Um, uh, Mami Triton to play their game with a more physical way. Yes. Quite interesting. What's your guess? Uh, what do you? Wha what would you say if you, if you should uh, give a, a guess for the end of this game? Um, it's always difficult. I know, but it's I just so funny I to I ask. I, I think Mami Triton will apply. Will try to uh, in the second half now try to uh, gain possession right away of the ball uh, at the start of the game because. That is one of the best scoring opportunities if you can actually utilize it. Yep. Um, and try to establish, the, establish themselves at the Turkish basket. If they can um, keep the ball running, they have a good chance at some point to uh, have a, an empty basket by the Turks, or mm -hmm. at least only uh, a gap. On the at least a gap. Yeah. Yep. But um, you shouldn't underestimate because they have, so uh, they have one goalkeeper who is applying immense pressure from um, the top of the basket. Because we were underneath the goalkeeper two or three times and we couldn't just push him up. Okay. Push him up. Interesting. So if you're just going in the leg last and thinking you're going to have an easy time being under his back, um, you might be in trouble <laughs> and you might be not scoring. Um, and on the other side, um, Turkey very clearly um, trying to do the same they did in the first half. And yeah, very well done here. Gaining possession of the ball, pushing it up and immediately going into the side uh, of uh, Malmö Triton here. Twisting and twirling actually here on the surface um, to try to keep possession of the ball. I think um, one of the Mount Trichin players here was more or less wrapping himself around the Turkish uh, forward that grabbed possession of the ball. And since they all have uh, fresh lungs here, they will go immediately for the uh, yeah. Mount Trichin basket. Yeah. Call from the referee. Yeah, call from the referee. I think the time clock we see the display is wrong. We we should have 15 should minutes. Have 15 minutes. Yep. Uh, but no, but it's it's not a semi-final game. Ah, you're right. It's you're right. Uh, we have different games today. It's, it's not all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, this why the first half was so fast yeah. uh, compared to the others. You're so oh right. Malmo Triton there stole away the basket from the Turks. Two players from Malmo Triton um, at the Turkish basket. So if they can get the ball through, they have a really good scoring opportunity. But Turkey applying pressure um, with the forwards and pushing the ball away here and <coughs> immediately going. Um, for a quick counter, take the Hakan token here. And he knows what it's going to do. He's going to stay two to three meters, four meters away from the from the Malmö Triton basket and just keep the ball in the possession and wait it. And wait. Because the time is ticking down. Malmö Triton has to get away from their own basket. They yeah. have to go for the ball. Same he with Kostoros last game, um, as soon as Akron scored for the first time. Akron, though, playing a little bit closer to the uh, opponent's basket to seize those uh, quick scores. Like they had right now, they had Hakan. 
took a year um, underneath the basket there and a very good scoring position and if you're playing uh, like 3-2-3 maybe 4 meters away from the um, Malmutritan basket you might be uh, reached easier by the defenders who are trying to push themselves away from the basket uh, trying to regain possession of the ball but at the same time if you can outpass them with a quick double pass uh, you will have um, immense pressure underneath the uh, Mamutritan basket and a very very good scoring opportunity. Here we go, there's an attack from the close side, uh, prevented and uh, it, it the ball is already on the open side but uh, this is a game Mamutritan uh, knows and they're waiting on the other on the open side and now we go with Mamutritan nice in the Malmutriton. direction of uh, the uh, uh, Turkish basket, the basket and the the there's one player and already around, let's go! That was a nice one well and it was, it was a really uh, well executed counter attack yes. here. It was uh, the one uh, player wrapped around the basket uh, with the metal position and he blocked the defender and the ball was in. It, was, it looked very easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's the way to play it. That's, that's what I meant with um, the Turks are trying to force, uh, force you and force the game onto you in the middle of the pool. But if you can actually reach the, the, goal, uh, the goal, there might not be a defender. And yep. Yep. you get those uh, fast break uh, scoring opportunities. If you get two, with one player usually you, you don't succeed, but if you get two players, um, underneath the basket and there is no defender there you can ha you have to block you have uh, time to put the ball into onto one side of the basket uh, block the vision away from the defender and from the forwards and then you will have a very good scoring opportunity let's see what the answer from Turkey is uh, there's a call from the referee and it's the uh, uh, chief referee it's from above throw and it's a free throw Turkey. against uh, Malmö Triton and um, I think uh, well, the the Turkey had a 1-0 head start here, but it uh, in a in a game of two times uh, ten minutes that doesn't count much. Another call from the referee above, and then a repeat of the free throw against Malmö Triton, and uh, here we go. If and it's uh, six and a half minutes left in this first half, and there's already uh, another uh, Turkish player waiting under oh the wow, basket. He didn't good, get the pass very, very, in the, very in, the in the hold hand, and Malmö now he's interrupted by the Malmi Triton player. And again, Malmi Triton is pulling out of this uh, frenzy around their basket, and they're trying to break through into the half of Turkey, but they are heavily intercepted by four checking players. And there's another call from the referee, and the chief referee from uh, out of the pool. Cannot see him right now. I think he might have actually been a time penalty. Yeah, he's sending one player out. And it's a. I don't know. Th for a timeout. Time there will be a sure yeah, timeout, time yeah. Timeout blue, actually. Okay. But who got the time penalty? I didn't see it. Or I do, do we? Some of the modern treatment was actually sent out here. But maybe it's from, from both teams. Or they want to. Maybe um, Turkey wants to have the optimal lineup in, in the pool to. Uh, to attack with a free throw yeah, yeah. to seize an overpower play here. Yeah. So because we know some some teams actually practice especially for those situations like Modo did in the World Championship uh, not the last one but the one before that where they had the 1-0 um, final game against Germany mm -hmm. they practice specifically for the um, free throw yeah, free yeah, throw yeah, yeah, yeah. overpower situation so you take a timeout to uh, to to get into the the system you 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 execute you will execute you speak about it for a second and then you go into it and everybody knows what to do yeah. just to do this one move just to do this one thing that you probably can only do once so interesting. Let's see if uh, the Turkish team has something like this in store. Um, I think they would go on with a lot of force right now and probably risk to catch another goal, but we have only four and a half minutes left here in game 51 in the Champions Cup 2018 in Berlin. And it's uh, uh, only one more game to go today and tomorrow we will have uh, the finals. Here we go. Turkey is coming in. Speaking from the EuroLeague uh, knowledge we have is what Malmö Triton is usually trying to do is if they get possession of the ball they will try to keep it for two minutes and just drum it away but yeah. there is well again a free throw for Turkey and now they are taking the defender's position Hakan Togi here trying to uh, occupy as much space as he can but the defender well is pushing him pushing is but it was a lot of pushing yeah it's actually really risky to push away a player like that if you are uh, in a situation like Malmö Triton is now because there is a uh, you're basically asking for a time penalty here. Yeah, and it was very obvious. It was uh, yeah. not only from our camera perspective. Right in front of the face of the referee here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, as we see, Mama Triton uh, trying to just keep possession of the ball and just scrum it away from Turkey, uh, trying to take down. But they need a score too. If they go in one-on-one, -on -one they will have penalty shooting. Yeah. So uh, 
it, it doesn't help them uh, to, to have the time. And again, another free throw against Marmon Triton. Oops. So, uh, yeah, quite often if you are in, in a situation like this uh, and the opponent is stealing your basket away constantly, like Hakantoba is doing here, here again, and if you can actually stay down there. Ah, okay, now he's giving out the position here. Quite sad, uh, actually, because the, the attacker was coming in with the ball here. But yeah, but it took him a little bit too long, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really bit a little bit surprised they don't go in with more force here into the basket of Mami Triton, but they are pretty good checked uh, for at the for checking of uh, Mami Triton yeah. right in front of the basket is so good, so they cannot pass the ball into the player waiting. Now there's a chance, yeah, play waiting, but here again. Snatch it away. And my retreat on is on attack, and going the over goal. the uh, surface and right above the bar, the goalkeeper of the Turks into so and there's here. a Mami Triton player waiting on the open side. But uh, uh, try to execute. Oh, now the ball is out again in the middle. Yeah, and now they have to keep the center the player and not give Turkey any chance to counter back to counter onto the side of Mami Triton. Uh, now we don't see the ball. Uh, Mami Triton is still in ball control, and uh, the the Turkish players try to stop them in the forward checking. And there are three Turkish players stopping one Mami Triton right in front of the basket. And uh, nevertheless, they are under pressure here because they are there is a lot of movement. The 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 yeah, defense of really Turkey here. is not that solid. But Turkey could snatch the ball away, and trying to get into the Swedish half right now. Two and a half minutes left here in the second half, and I guess we're looking at penalties. Oh no, there's a quick fast break here. Ooh, another empty goal. Yeah, and he should go into the basket. Go into the basket. Another yeah, basket. one uh, Mami Trijan player stole the basket oh, from the... Well done here from the defender to go up and actually intercept the ball that was trying to be shot. Another call from the referee. Yeah, but it's, it's the deck referee. He's grabbing the head from Mami Trijan. That's that's <laughs> that's really lucky for Turkey here because they were because they were under heavy pressure uh, yeah. at the wrong basket and the goalkeeper was missing his position twice now. I think none of these teams uh, are looking forward to a penalty shooting uh, after such a day, so they will force a, a decision. But I'm, I'm, I'm here we go. There, there's a good chance. <laughs> but the ball fell out. Nobody saw it. The second, but it's uh, the, the no, last that, that, that Turkish player goes in, and this is probably a good chance because no one knows where the ball is, yeah. and that sometimes that's a good chance to score and to go in from the blind side into the goalkeeper. Yeah. But here, Marvin Triton uh, player for checker was wide away, oh and we have oh really that could be a chance. Three Turkish players player the around the basket. Is it in? I think it's... Mm, no, it? no, tackled away to the surface. That was extremely close there. That was very dangerous very for Mami well uh, the basket. Because there were three to four players around the basket. One minute, uh, about one minute left here in the second half. Another call from the referee and the oh three throw against Turkey. Turkey. Mm, that could be, uh, I think it's probably the last chance for Mami Triton here in this last minute uh, to score. And to the side, uh, the game uh, throw to their side. Otherwise, I we're looking. Penalty shootout. Five, shoot five off. players on yeah. the side of. You should uh, throw in everything you have. Of Turkey and try to get the score because. Most Here we go. Yeah. One player, two on player, on, on, on the three, four. Really opportunity here, and again, he's in the, in the Möller positioning, trying to get the ball, and he's getting the ball passed down there. Oh, that could but be a chance. Turkey forwards actually trying to well, the block the, the, the ball the away. Wow. Do you see how the goal is moving? It was just yes. like. Poop. Okay, time is ticking, 25 Again. seconds. But well done here to try to keep Malmö Triton away from the basket. 17 seconds now, and basically what you do now is you put everybody on the water. And here we go, we next go attack wave. wave. Oh, there is only one player, here. the basket is empty. To the basket, Eight yeah. seconds. Whoa. Oh, this that's is that's a big a chance. If the player goes now through, that's only that's three, three seconds, seconds left. This basically is a pass. Oh, oh no, that's it. Yeah. Uh, okay. You're going to time out it. and uh, end of the second half. Oof, that was close. Basically, rule number one of the water rock is never pass the ball back to, to, the, the, to the goalkeeper, goalkeeper if yeah. he's alone at the basket. Yes, especially in this moment in that part of the game. Usually, wow. if you do it, you're the guy who's got to put the equipment away after practice. <laughs> 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 That's a basic rule. <laughs> Very true. So we're looking at penalty shootout. Uh, the first team uh, that wins, that make a point, uh, it's is just it? It's 1-1, it's not 3-1? Yep. No. Okay. It's, it's just a sudden death penalty shootout. 
Mm, I, th I think Mama Triton might actually have a bit of an edge here because they have two or three players who are really experienced penalty shooters, like Andreas Bergenholzen, who is really good and really agile defender for penalty shooters. But again, if uh, players like Hakan Togo uh, yes, exactly. can just brute force overpower him with strength. Um, but I don't know the capability of, of uh, defenders from uh, the from Turkish. Turkey, yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, they have one very strong defender as well, from as far as we know. But we will see how Mama Triton um, will actually manage to. Who's going to go first? I think Turkey, Turkey goes going first, first, attacking first. So 45 seconds here, uh, last game, for the only one game uh, go for today and uh, we're in the penalty shooting and the first uh, uh, shootout decides if we have a winner. It's very interesting if you're playing in a very small pool like here at Tempest Cup, it's only yeah. meters, you only have six meters to the goal, whilst the goalkeeper still has three meters, uh, three and a half meters, um, yeah. and then I think it's Andreas Benholz who's defending. Is yeah, it looks like him. Is it number seven? Yeah. No, it's Johan Ferlo. Okay. And so there's a very, very short way to the goal. And a lot of times uh, okay. people are used to um, come from above to force the goalkeeper onto the basket. Yes, yes. But in a small pool like this, if you know you're a fast swimmer, you can actually try to get underneath to the goalkeeper. To outrun him. And try to pretty much reach the goal. Oh, very Now nice the player. Turkish player is under I him. I think he ripped out the If he can, yeah, he's him. inside. Yep. Yeah. Very well done here in the last moment to uh, from Felden to try to grab the ball, but the Turkish player with a little bit more strength could hold on to it, grab it, rip it out, and push it into the basket. So what you can do is you can try to swim straight to the goal as fast as, as possible fast as and can. basically yep. reach the goal at the same time as the defender does. And at some point, if the goalkeeper is anticipating an attack from above, he will lay on top of the and goal, you and him. you will already be in scoring position underneath the goal. So yep. very very. Yeah. And the pool here is only 3 meters 60, 60 deep, so uh, you can yeah. be there quite fast. But and again, we see an attack from both. I think it's Andreas Bergenholz now. Uh, defended by Hakan Togo here, but Bergenholz has got a really nice grip on the neck of Hakan Togo. And he's going to go back Going to the basket. Again. And it's really hard uh, after such a game uh, and after such a day to stay down for the yeah. 45 uh, seconds. Especially if a big player like Hakan. Yes, who he uses a lot of uh, oxygen. Uses a lot of oxygen. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 the long no, arms no. of no, no, Chika, no, yeah. yeah. But uh, Hakan was out of breath, I think. Yeah. It, uh, that's you see you it in the movements. The movements. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was just yeah. trying to get a last grip on the ball. Yeah. yeah. And Andreas Bergholz actually did very well. He didn't try to score on the first opportunity. He no, got so he, he waited he for the right the moment. Ball once more, yeah. um, getting Hakan out of, out of position there, and um, then putting the ball in when ah. he got a clear chance to score. Ah, it's not it. I think it's a shootout one on one. Huh? Okay, it's it's three. Shoot, it looks like three. No, I mean both both scored, so it's going on. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's blurring. It's blurring. Sorry. Interesting. What did he do? He just went up again? Just uh, He tried to he actually yeah, yeah, tried yeah. to come from the bottom, but the goalkeeper anticipated it. But he's taking a lot of time there, it's only twenty seven seconds left. And he didn't really stress the goalkeeper, so the goalkeeper is just waiting on the basket. He's trying to get underneath the goal. Oh no. Oh, well 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 fast done, but, but the uh, goalkeeper actually in the grip grabbed, of grabbed the, the goalkeeper. Arm. Very well done here by the goalkeeper, but now he's sitting on the basket. <laughs> actually quite risky here. <laughs> But it was only six seconds to go, yeah, so yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. could have managed actually yeah. to... It was quite, <laughs> very quite a good strategy. Si ...sitting on the basket and trying to block the, the path. And since but he was he such a massive player, it, yeah. it, could, it worked. <laughs> but you got to be careful to not cover up the basket with your, the blades of your fins, because yep. um, then yep. you get too many And uh, the other thing, uh, the player, the Turkish player, was going in between the legs of him. Yeah. If he would, they, they could have called it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But usually it's an advantage for the attacker, and you don't call it uh, unless it really um, stops the penalty. Yeah. Yeah, and there we see, we see he tried, oh, oh really well that was here. Very, very fast, fast, almost made it in the first run. Oh, he's going up, he, I think he has, he's got a... Well, he shouldn't go, the Turkish, the Turkish player is not allowed. I don't know if he's got a grip on the ball, if he's no, got a grip no, on the ball. No, no, he didn't. Apparently he no. didn't. No. Holding, I think it's too Yeah. I didn't hear the, the sound, the horn. Because if he's got some part of his body on the ball and the possession is not clear, he can actually go up with the ball. But if uh, Mamma Trittin is in clear possession of the ball, he is he's considered ruled um, not in possession and is have to does have to leave the 
the attacker. Big question to the live chat. Uh, can you both? Can you hear us both? Can you hear uh, uh, Thomas and uh, me in the live chat? Uh, Bimsy666 uh, says he can only one hear commentator, but you did have the problem uh, a little bit ago, and okay. uh, that's because we were on both sides. Uh, one is speaking on. Uh, Maybe the you have to use both parts of your headphones if yep. you're using headphones. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, should have been called. Yes. I think it's actually a it is um, a repetition. Vegard Jakobsen actually has a point there. Andreas Bergenholzen was standing on the side of the pool of okay. the, uh, at the step, and you're not allowed to stand on the side no. of the step as long as you're in possession of the ball because yeah. it's considered using uh, the pool to your advantage. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that was that was. If he could have the head again yeah. uh, uh, in the defense. Oh, the hand that goes up with him. But well he, he was he not called. He might be able to go down as well. Oh, oh yeah, he goes down, down before. That's interesting. 24 seconds left here. Ni very well done here by Hakan to, to, but I think the mom yeah, Mamsi is Ooh. playing, getting in. Yeah. And yes, uh, the Vegard Jakobsen is actually correct. He shouldn't be allowed to, able, uh, to be standing on a step there because it's considering using the pool to your advantage to save um, strength. So actually, the referees should have called um, this and stopped the yeah. penalty from the yeah. also. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, you can hear us both. Sometimes we're sitting here in our bubble talking uh, all day long. Nobody can hear us. So from time to time, we ask uh, if the co connection is good enough. OK, um, back to the penalty shooting. And we have no decision yet. And this goes on it's for... Getting it's getting interesting now, because we have seen Hakan Tugger yeah. defending twice now. Yes, and he will not do it and a third time. And then at some point... Uh oh, he comes in fast. Yeah, this is what probably what you... And the same uh, goalkeeper again, number seven. Yeah. He has these power films from uh, France. W th th they're very fle flexible. And I think he kicked into the face of the yep. Turkish player. He looked like he because had a... Because he's yeah. using his, his advantage a lot. Yeah. I think it's one. Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah. I think it's advantage. Yeah. Good call by the referees here. Yes. Because he clearly kicked yeah. into yeah. the face of the attacker. Yeah. I mean, he's discussing, but from our point of view, uh, clear call. Yes, yes. And they were they were signing advantage right away. For those who don't know, if the referee is holding their hands up, uh, straight up, uh, but not calling or not signaling, it's uh, advantage call. And as soon as the uh, scoring opportunity for the attacker uh, subsides, they can uh, call the foul. Call the foul. Yeah. But at some point, they actually um, have to keep the game going because advantage is only for a couple of yeah. minutes. And the the hold uh, the up uh, upholded hand uh, says we've seen something, we've seen what happened. But to give the advantage to the attacker, maybe if he succeeds, uh, yeah. it's forgiven and forgotten. And another attack. Mm. And we yeah, have it's quite risky here to. Oh yeah, that's what he shouldn't do. And gets the dress back holds him. Here. Oh, and he was in control. Yes, he's in control. Mm -hmm. And was he from the beginning? That's a question. Looks like. <laughs> All right. Now Turkey is on the defense. They have to defend now. Well done here by Andreas Bergenholzen. But if uh, I really wonder if uh, they uh, put uh, Hakan two times in, uh, whom do they have now? If Hakan is their uh, strongest uh, defender, yes, I don't know. You have to tell me, Thomas. I don't know the Turks that well. <laughs> I guess they have four goalkeepers. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, but he's already, he's already, uh, already, already under the goalkeeper. And he c he can't he doesn't turn. He, he's got to turn around and try to defend Interest the goal again. Interesting. Oh. And now he's trying yeah. to... I think that's... Uh, but he's uh, he has a hold of the ball. If he can keep the grip... Oh, oh, oh no, he got, got it! The ball out. <laughs> Very well done here by I the goalkeeper. I have thought that. From the beginning, from the first second, I would have thought he will easily score because yes. he was under the goalkeeper. That's that's those moments uh, I was talking about before. He tried to score the first opportunity he got. Yep. And that's usually the last point the goalkeeper can actually get a grip onto the ball. If you just wiggle with the ball one time um, and appear to be scoring and the goalkeeper just doesn't grip the ball at the right moment or anticipates it um, in the wrong way, You've got the certain score and you're good to go. So it's uh, Hakan attacking, I think. So it's 3-3 three three again. And oh, he's got a very good, he's underneath, but he's got a very good, should have got actually a very good grip there, but he didn't. He didn't at some point. Interesting. So he's, he's trying to, to air staff uh, the goalkeeper, 20 seconds yeah, left. You can always see the, the stomach of the goalkeeper pulsating. It's, it's Hakan, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's Hakan Tukur. 
And now he's got the Ooh, golden wolf. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the golden was out of there. Um, it's interesting to see because you see he's still standing down, but he has no more strength. Yeah. Yeah. You see, there's no muscle tension yeah, as well. So exactly. he's trying to relax as much as possible. And, and yeah. I think it's Andreas Bergenholzen again who's trying to defend now. And we'll see if the Turkish. Oh, uh, he's attacking now. And we will see. Is it no, it can't be Andreas Bergenholzen because he already attacked. Yeah. Who is it? Let's see the number. It's the same goalkeeper again. Uh, I think it's. Oh, the goalkeeper has his head in the basket. Mm -hmm. well, he's got a bit of a grip on the ball. Again, same style. Yeah, as it, lo as it, it lo really looks similar. But I think if the if the ah the Turkish players, Reed is actually ma managing to. At some point, he's either got to let loose of the ball, or if he's got a good grip. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what, what was the camera change? Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> He doesn't have it, it's falling down, and he got it! He's got Seven it! Seven seconds, six seconds! No, yeah, the Turks got it! Wow! <laughs> it's <a> crazy <laughs> penalty shooter, <laughs> actually. Very well defended here. Two times the defense by Hakan Tugur, who couldn't get it in. Twice defended <laughs> by the second goalkeeper. You should think about changing it into the <laughs> to number one guy there. <laughs> but yeah. It's very interesting to see if um, the first two to three players can score if there's a player getting sent out um, during penalties yeah. uh, for, for a foul. They might not even have done it uh, on purpose. Um, your entire strategy might change up. And you usually only have two to three goalkeepers who are really exactly. good at defending penalties. And then it's getting interesting. And then it's getting <laughs> interesting. And at some point those are going to run out of here. But I don't know what they are waiting for because actually Turkey started shooting, so it should be over. I don't know. Turkey's got started on the attack, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, so it should be over. But they're still discussing. Maybe, maybe the referees uh, have on the ball have seen something. I'm not sure yet. And we see another penalty time. I th I don't, I'm not sure. I think they are not sure if he had possession the entire time. Okay. That can be the only thing because yeah. it yeah. doesn't look very clear to me if the possession is there for yeah. the Turkish goalkeeper or not. Well, there will be another one, looks like. Sadly, we don't have a in a proper name and number list from the Turks. Yep. Because actually, I'd like to give credits to number 12 for <laughs> defending. <laughs> Last defending minute really action, but defending pretty well here. Um, but since there is no video review here at the Champions Cup, it's only uh, between the referees now to decide if they uh, want to repeat the penalty or if they give it to Turkey. We can have a look here if we just... Uh, you can go back on your own uh, uh, live stream. Just... Uh no, it's, uh, that's the Turkish the attack. Okay, hold on. A little bit later. Oh, no, that's too late. Not so easy on that. Does anybody in the chat actually know who's number 12? <laughs> Which Turkish uh, player is number 12? We should have a team list flying around somewhere, but a lot of people actually... Uh, this was Togan and then they repeated. Uh -huh. So maybe we can have a look. I'm not quite sure what the uh, deck ref is actually discussing because he, he apparently held out the ball above the surface. How do I get they're not really sure if he had full possession of the ball or not. How do I get rid of this? Maybe here? No, mm -hmm. oh, then they stop it. I think you have to just close the entire chat. Uh, here we go, look. This is the repetition. Okay, I can see the goalkeeper is coming in from the ball. He's getting the grab from the backside. We're re-watching uh, the last uh, last penalty here. Penalty shooting in the live stream. He was on the ball on the way up. Huh. So he, uh, for us, as long as we can see it, he didn't lose uh, 
and apparently he let go of the of the attacker as soon as he lost possession of the ball and then he went down with him he snatched the ball he was in close range of the basket so he's allowed to do that should, be, should have been fine yeah, he held the ball above the surface so what it looks good uh, from what from what we have seen it looks like a safe penalty to be yeah. honest interesting ah there we see Kira Aaron thanks it's Ekin Kok if I don't know if I'm, I'm I'm actually pronouncing it correctly it's a uh, team captain isn't he a team captain or is it Hakan I think Ekin uh, was the one I was in contact with when the team was applying possibly sorry for mispronouncing I'm not used or not very knowledgeable about the kosh, Turkish maybe it's kosh but I think yeah uh, it's some because of the little uh, uh, yeah. under <laughs> the under the sea Sorry, we are not proficient with the Turkish alphabet here. Ekin Kosh. But it might be Kosh, yeah. Okay, another penalty. Is it going to be redone? Repetition, yeah, it looks like. They are all ready and... Yeah, they're getting ready for the two I would like to know... The explanation for it. The explanation or the reasoning behind it. There might have been something on the surface that the goalkeeper didn't let go of the ball carrier as soon as he actually as soon as he um, got lost control of the ball. It's number, it's number nine, well, number no nine no now here for, uh, for Turkey. Uh, for Turkey. And, number and again, he's, he's got a grab onto the ball and he looks like a strong guy. He might be actually able to push it through. Really important here. Ooh, what might Fighting on the surface. What might have happened is that one guy has got the foot on the step while he ah, the yeah, and, well, and he's in, it's in. He lost, lost possession of the ball there and we're gonna continue. You gotta be aware of that if you're a goalkeeper, bring it up with your own strength. If you're using the step on the side, well, it's not a good idea. You, you failed and you basically failed without any reason. But the only reason I can uh, imagine that you do this, you're not having a step in your uh, uh, exercise pool, Poss so possibly, you're not used yes, to it. You're not used to it. Interesting, because I wouldn't. Uh, in all the pools we have, we have these steps, and we would never yeah. use it. So uh, gonna get us a beer, I guess. <laughs> and <laughs> it's gonna be actually really tough on on the Turks here if that's the call because Andreas Bergenholzen was doing pretty much the same thing yeah. in the first penalty and he was defending one of the crucial ones uh, before here so a bit unlucky here by the Turks if that's the actual call yeah the uh, the Champions Cup is still going we still have one more game ahead and this is a penalty shootout between Malmö Triton and Turkey and it was quite a long break there, so uh, some of the players actually might have managed to catch a breath here. And you might have your A-game goalkeepers back, back at it again. It's again the same player with the, the power fins. Yeah. But uh, who kicked last time. Ooh, oh, no, there was a quick, there was a, yeah, a uh, uh, hold on to the head. And I would have called it. Yeah, I think it's over. I think it's going to be good defended. He was holding on to the, the head of the yeah. defender. But I'm not sure actually why he's able to defend the goal again because if you're out of uh, penalties, you're out. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder so why too. Um, I would like to know if he actually got called for kicking, he shouldn't be able to play again. But otherwise, why should they have uh, repeated? Oh no, why shouldn't I? They uh, uh, um, didn't call it. Hmm. This is getting a bit strange here. Hmm. I mean, it's getting late, but. Those should actually be clear rules here for the referees. But since they were discussing it, uh, they are, I guess they're not making them up. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we didn't this see one. Yes, but the uh, goalkeeper, yeah, but the yeah. goalkeeper with number seven fouled before he kicked the attacker he in the yeah. face, so he should be out for two minute penalty and shouldn't be able to rejoin in the penalty. And field. another attack. Uh, oh, oh! And uh, this goal. That was well done here fast. by Malmö Cheetah. That's it. And that's it for the game between Malmö and I think it's this. Interesting. So we have uh, one more game ahead of us. This was a 4-5 uh, Turkey against Mamut Triton. Oops. With 1-1 one, one during the regular game time. Yep. Uh, and we're now going to see the last match of the
the day. Which is uh, Akaren uh, from Norway against uh, Batwais uh, from Republic. Czech Republic. And you probably know Batwais quite well. Yeah, we play against <laughs> yeah. them about four <laughs> times a year. <laughs> because we are uh, playing with them in the Czech League. Uh, and we'll see how they can perform against the team from Akaren. I heard they're uh, <laughs> they're a very young team. That was <laughs> <laughs> about 28, uh, the average. <laughs> Double it up. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the average uh, age? It's it's probably I over 40. I had to guess it's uh, uh, between 30 and 40 mm. because they have some young players with them. Like Matt. But, uh, but yeah. Budweiser actually has a the um, under 20 pretty much all the other 21 players who played at the World Championships yes. are Budweiser players. Yes. So they have youngsters, but they are not yet ready to join no, uh, they're the, super the main young. team. So they are super young, but they have a group of 12 to 15 people who are actually really motivated. So I'm looking forward to see them play because we played them sometimes in the Czech League and um, they're improving year by year. They're getting better really fast. And it's really nice and to see them uh, improving over the, over the last uh, four to five years, actually. So um, good job here for Budweiser to actually have a youngster team on, on their side, also for the entire Czech Republic. And uh, Matt Boyer said uh, to me, uh, the whole, uh, almost the whole uh, Budweiser team uh, playing now, they are soldiers, so they have to keep uh, well, uh, well in trained, in shape, uh, yeah, in good shape, so they are fit, so we can see. And uh, Akarin uh, showed us also a very good and uh, nice game, and I guess they are a little bit younger than, uh, yeah. they have a younger team. Akarin, on average, I'd say they have the younger team. They have some older players with them, but um, their main players, I'd say, um, are uh, of I like uh, Christian Schaefer, uh, Hakan Baldhauk, those players. End of the 20s. Yeah. yeah. Are quite young or in their prime, Come you'd, you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit younger. Uh, uh, then yeah, younger than Bud was, yeah. um, for sure. But uh, that's uh, what I like about underwater rugby. Um, sure, if you have a younger uh, team with a lot of experience, you have an advantage, but you can also compensate uh, getting older with the experience. Yes. I, f I, I always like to play against uh, experienced players because they are calm. Yes. And uh, they know the situation. They've been there, and sometimes the younger players try to go in with speed, and the older ones just wait for the right moment and the right time. It's just a tsh and you lose yeah. the ball, and then they go for it, and then they score, and that's it. It's those fun moments in practice when there are new players coming who are really fit and in physically in really good shape, and they're starting out, and they're having their first or second year of experience, and they're playing against some of the old guys, as the really old guys in the club, and they think they can overcome them with full force, and then uh, at some point they're just snatching the ball away because they know the movements, they yeah, know the patterns. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're scoring within a moment of a fraction of seconds, even though they don't have the air or the speed yeah. anymore. Yeah. They're just there, and they're going to do it. And it's, yeah. it's frustrating for young players for the first couple it of years. Definitely is. If yeah, they're yeah. not getting up on the level. And at some point, you're going to overcome it. In but it takes a while. But it, it takes some time, actually. Yeah. It's like with the uh, young wolves. They just uh, try to, 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 to test uh, the yeah. older ones and try to test the hierarchy. And the older ones are just like, you don't try that again. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Keep it coming, young ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so the yeah, goal seems to be a problem with the goal. Yeah, uh, because the, um, the thing is, we have uh, these these suction maps uh, mats under the steel plates, and uh, sometimes if they get loose, um, there's a lot of uh, particles in the yeah. pool, and then you put try to put them back again, and they yeah, don't suck in, and they, they don't uh, clue to the to the tiles there. Yeah, and when there are one. Uh, one time uh, uh, off, it's easy to push them away. Yeah, it's also a bit dangerous for the players who might actually get injured on the edges here, which you can see. Uh, we use, we use, <laughs> hello there, but <laughs> player. Uh, we use uh, same some same types of plates for our baskets. We, we have really round edges. Okay. And we put some extra coverage and protection, right? not just um, duct tape, but some um, um, corner protectors you would use in on, on, the on the edge of the uh, plate. The plate yes uh, but the thing is why we we use that and they are rounded but the thing is if you have too much on them and then you have the edge you can easily get stuck with the fingers you know in the movement mm. didn't happen never happen okay never happen good to know 
because we are thinking about like polstering or like 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 putting a, a frame mm -hmm. around it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, we always thought if you you try to get hold of a ball and if you ever got stuck with the fingernails on the tile. Yeah, on the tile, it's really yeah. disgusting. Yeah. And it quite often clips the fingernail. Yeah. Actually, it happened to me during the tournament here. Ugh. <laughs> it happened to two or three players of us. Ah. I once played uh, in Rostock. Uh, here in, in Germany, there is a there was a pool with tiles that were uh, raw. You know that uh, yeah, um, it's rough surface. Yeah. And we, we after the the tournaments, after the league tournaments, you look like you we skinned alive. Yeah, it was really That's terrible. That's why a lot of people start using elbow, el using elbow protections too. Yeah. If, if they want to go with the ball alongside the wall, yeah. Usually you already you always um, uh, lose the skin, your yeah, elbow yeah. and lose yeah. a lot of skin and yeah. that's yeah. people that's why you use elbow protectors. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not because uh, they look cool. <laughs> 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 but it's uh, funny because I made this poll in the uh, Underwater Rugby Players United and not a lot of players... Uh, a lot of polls, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a lot of people tell you me... And you I might so be <laughs> conducting a bachelor thesis <laughs> and nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> You're sneakily trying to get actually your... Actually, I have a plan. <laughs> uh, it's true, I have a plan. You're actually trying to get your master's or bachelor's <laughs> thesis in and you just... Other than sending, sending some scripted uh, um, thesis blocks out there, you just going for one question at a time every week and at some point you're going to have enough material there to conduct your doctor's analysis. <laughs> I never thought uh, you give me so much credit <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but the thing is what I was really surprised uh, not many players use any kind of protection like yeah. tooth protection uh, like groin protection or like elbow protection. Uh, I think uh, especially when it comes to tooth protection the snorkel is already quite well protecting it. Uh, yeah, if you yeah, have a thick yeah, yeah. enough material, True. I mean there are some with it very is thin something, material, yeah. but some who are having those thick ridges uh, in the snorkels is very good protection for our teeth already. Yeah. And I know because I had tooth surgery. <laughs> really? Because uh, of rugby? No, uh, no because no, rugby no, is okay. scripted, but uh, I had to be extra protective. I think they got this there's some problem with the tile there. There are these... Uh, uh, uh is it one of them? Are they screwing it back in? Uh, might be a loose screw or something like that. Yeah, they're trying to screw something in or, or rip something off. Because they've got scissors down there. Something, some sharp edges maybe or something like that. Huh. Never had the problem. I know the pool and I don't know what... Uh, yeah. Pardon me? They don't want us to go home. Yeah, no, no, no. We do, who, who wants to go home? This is my home. <laughs> Why you just got to sleep? Yeah, and... Then again, um, I start personally started using elbow protectors because of um, rough surface and rough pools. Yeah. We had we had uh, we have them on bar pools, and I was pretty much bleeding all over every yes. Monday, and um, it's not a fun thing. Yeah. Because at some point you're destroying your own clothing. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and then drum protectors, some, a lot of players don't dislike drum protectors because they might feel very uncomfortable. True, but uh, Blumentritt, that's an outfitter uh, here in Germany, he uses the, the ones, not the regular ones from boxing, but those from Thai boxing. They're a little bit, uh, no, a little bit uh, not tighter, but, but a little bit smaller. Yeah, or not different shaping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the movement, are in, yeah, they, they don't rip uh, yeah. on the skin of the... Of the uh, of the inside, so a good hint for all those players using uh, crown protection: use two or three, two up to three. I know some people use three um, trunks. And yes, yes.